We're here at the LA Auto Show, starting it off right with Porsche. So immediately walking in, we have the RSR, the 99X Electric, the Cayenne Coupe, the Taycan, and the new 992. I mean, it's a pretty great lineup already. We literally just walked into the show. Let's take a quick walk around around the new 992. So look at the attention and details on the light. It basically has a light bar on the back, which is really interesting. Uh, some like really cool fact is that it runs 20 inch tires on the front, 21s on the back, and it's a standard wide body. So that means this is running basically a GT platform. So similar to the GT3 RS, GT2 RS, and GT3. Um, inside they have a whole updated technology section. I mean, just look at the shifter and everything. It's just brand new. I've never seen it before. One of the most important things about this car is actually the hood. So the hood goes back to the old classic 911 hood, where it's actually a square bonnet instead of a round one. So that was something that's really interesting. And another homage to the past of the 911 is the lights. So if you look at the attention of the lights, they're actually rounded and then the curves that go out the lines are the same as the old 911. So these ones are actually, I believe, the second upgraded lights um, out of three stages. But it's a beautiful car, guys. Can't wait to show you around. Where are we? We're in Bentley, AKA Kia. Oh, great. So this is an S-Class competitor. It is an S-Class competitor. Okay. Oh, oh God, it's small. How does this compare? Okay, so this is supposed to be an S-Class competitor, but um, in my honest opinion, I don't think it competes with the S-Class, but for the price point, I mean, it's extremely nice for what it is. It's a really clean interior, but like, it's not an S-Class. It looks too BMW-y. It, it's okay, too bmw -y. But it, it's really nice. It is honestly really nice. Like, I'm very surprised. They have real wood paneling right here. That feels really nice. The leather itself is really good quality. I would need to drive it to feel it, but I mean, it's nice. It is nice. Okay guys, here at Subaru with the Outbacks, they honestly have a really good presentation for the cars. Very good nature, outdoorsy vibe, fog machine and everything. Um, yeah. Hey guys, so Subaru Outback, honest opinion, this is seriously the most spacious and comfortable backseat I've been in in an SUV, which is kind of shocking because the car from the outside is pretty small, but like, look at this. My legs are fully extended, like, and I'm leaning back. I'm basically reclined. I mean, actually 12 out of 10. I love it. Hey guys, here with one of the most iconic moments of the Le Mans history of all time, Ford vs Ferrari. They just released a movie about it, 12 out of 10 guys, you need to go see it, it's actually fantastic. So right behind us we have Bruce McLaren's Ford GT here. So I don't know where Ken Miles is, but I mean, dude, look at this thing, it's gorgeous. It's just like, it's so spectacular and jaw dropping because you think about this car and how much history is behind it. Like, you don't realize this is the actual car that raced in Le Mans against Ferrari and won. One, two, and three. I mean, 217 miles per hour. This thing's a beast. Look at this thing. I mean, like, wow. It's seriously something else, guys. Okay, guys, when talking about American muscle, you can't leave out my absolute favorite car here, the Mustang Shelby GT. Take a look at this thing, guys. 707 horsepower, absolute track beast. This thing's literally made to demolish anything on the track. So I was, I had the privilege of sitting inside one on the track at um, Auto Club, Fontana Speedway. And I kid you not, we passed everyone. No matter what car you're driving, this is seriously probably the best handling and most fun car you could get. You could buy a Lamborghini and this and that, but nothing will make you feel the road and will have that much fun, power, and just like, I don't know, overall performance as a Shelby GT. There you go, that's my spiel for the car. Just buy one over anything else, get a Mustang. Honestly, take a look at the diffuser on this thing, guys. This is literally, Ford is literally selling you the car. GTE Pro car. It's it's great. It's insane. And I love the thing I love most with this car is that because <laughs> they're selling it as a track car and they're not restricted to the regulations of the FIA and whatnot, this has more power. And I believe it. they did say this produces more downforce as well. So this thing is quite fast. Big wing. Big wing. I'm telling you guys, this thing is insane. Look at just the diffuser alone. I mean, I could talk about the diffuser for hours. Okay, guys, we're here with the Mach-E. Just a quick little thing. So it starts at 42000 which is a really interesting price point for Ford to set out when you have the Tesla that starts at around 35000 So the Mach-E, honestly, in person, it looks really good. I'm genuinely surprised. I'm actually shocked. Uh, it works. It works somehow. And it's fast. It's not a Mustang though. I'm sorry. You can't call it a Mustang. Oh my god. Guys, you need to search up this car right now. 787B or 767B as this one is. Um, it's, it's running a insane. Three or four bank is it a rotor? Yes, rotor, right? Yeah. Three or it's four a bank rotary. rotary engine. Dude, 
It's insane. It's so loud and crazy. I haven't seen this car race, but I did see it at Long Beach. I watched the IMSA GTO RX-7, which has this same four bank rotary engine in it. And it sounds immaculate. Definitely the best sounding race car I've ever, I've ever heard. Not all that fast compared to its competitors, but they were surprisingly reliable. Okay guys, we're here with the brand new BMW, Su I mean Toyota Supra. Uh, so what's really interesting, it's running uh, Brembo brakes in the front, Toyota brakes in the back. But this thing's a beast. It was so underrated when they tested it. I think they rated it at like 300 horsepower. At and Button it, Willow? Yeah. It's like a Streets of Willow. It's two seconds slower than a GTR. It's like It's insane. Crazy. Like, the actual numbers were, I think it was like 50 or 60 horsepower that was underrated on this car. Like, I mean, come on. This thing's insane. Like, I don't care what people say about it. You can never make all the old um, MK4 Super fanboys happy, but like, this is a perfect car. This is seriously my favorite car on the road right now. Really? Yeah, honestly. Because like favorite. the new Mustang's not out yet, so I can't say that's my favorite until it's out. So okay. until then, Supra has it. That's a Mirai? Yeah. No way. That's the Mirai. They made it look good? Yeah. <laughs> it's a little loud, but Dylan likes it. I like it. It has like kind of Supra lights in the back. What? Toyota? I applaud you with this car. Honestly, the Mirai, the first um, Mirai they made was not very good looking, we'll say that. Uh, the second one was like, okay, but this is a good looking car. It I is. love it. And then you go into R for race mode. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't put this in the vlog. <laughs> Do you guys want to talk about the best priced sports car? We're here with the brand new Corvette C8. So basically under $60,000, you're getting a car that's pushing 495 horsepower. Look at this thing. It's absolutely insane. I mean, honestly, I love the looks of this car. I know it's a little bit hated, but um, you kind of have to see the car in person. It's all driver oriented, which I love about this car. It's meant for the driver. So this car, when they dynoed it, basically it just sh overshot the water. Like it was insane how much more horsepower it produced. And zero to 60 in 2.9 seconds. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. This thing's insane. Car of the year, like Matt was saying. It won car of the year. It won car of the year. I mean, to say I love it I love it I love it the M2CS is finally out guys take a look at this thing huge huge brake I mean this car is seriously in my opinion probably one of the best driver oriented cars like I was talking about the Corvette this car is seriously so low to the ground it's so grippy and touchy it just handles it does whatever you want it to it turns on a dime it's a track built car if honestly, if um, someone's asking me the question, if I was offered any M series car, which one would I buy? I'd go with the M2 CS. I think this is seriously like the most driver oriented and fun car. It's a fun little coupe. I mean, couldn't ask for more with the car. I mean, there's really no competitors for it, in my opinion. Yeah, there is. Which one? Supra. Oh, no, you can't compare. No, you can't compare the Supra. No, no, stop it. No. Okay, but that's a Porsche 718 versus a BMW M2 CS. We got different price ranges, no, different engines. Pretty close. That. In my opinion, CS? I'd still get this. I'd still get the CS really? over it. Yeah, honestly, I'd get the CS yeah. Too, actually. The CS is just gonna be better. I mean, the 718 is a depressing car, but since they got rid of the um, what's it called the flat six, right? Yep. And so, yeah, but the Supra is something different. That's literally a Z4. If you have a Z4 here, we'll find one. What do you think about two series? Honestly, I think it's an interesting concept to bring here. You would think it's more of a European market oriented car considering the size of it. It has but I mean like, really big wheels. But I mean like Mercedes has the CLA here. They have a CLA and, and the, the and A-Class. And Audi has the A3. They have the A3. Mercedes also has the A-Class, which I think this is kind of a competitor for. It's it front-wheel drive. It is front-wheel drive. That's what I was going to say. It, if you buy bad. a BMW that's front-wheel drive. Honestly, I feel like BMW would make it fun. Yeah, I wouldn't, would you, would you buy a BMW? I wouldn't want a front wheel drive car, but if I were to have to have a front wheel drive car, I'd want it to be a BMW. Really? Yeah, I mean, BMW just like manufactures towards the drivers and towards driving. Like, that's why, like, in my opinion, it really is the ultimate driving machine. You're driving a car, there's not like any other car like a BMW when you can actually feel the road and just feel like so protected and like feel like you have so much control over everything. It's just different. It's different. Okay. So, uh, there's some copyrighted music playing, but there's this is actually really cool. This little detail, it's little lights. Ready, guys? Okay, going over details for a car that this price, you can't really find a more like a tight package. feeling, yeah, car. Like I know this car's front wheel drive, but I really need to see how well it drives. But I think it's honestly gonna do amazingly. 
Just look at the interior, like, okay, it's small, yes. It's great. I want to go sit in, a, in one of the competitors across yeah. the, the booth. Well, like, I feel like I'm in a proper BMW. Like, I don't know, it just feels right. Like, I get it might be a little small, but like, it's perfect. Look at that, hand gestures and everything. Gestures, I can't even talk. It's a little but, tacky, um, but... Oh my God, it's amazing. It's seriously really? next level. Like, I'm shocked. I love it. Good job, BMW. So here we have Acura's two IMSA class winning cars, the DPI, Acura ARX05, I believe, and the NSX GT3 Evo. This one is not the real-time racing one, and this one is, the, of course, the Penske Acura team that won. Big wing, gang. Big wing. It's actually pretty incredible that Acura won both classes with both their cars. We're going to see how much more we can vlog, guys. I'm powering through, but I'm losing my voice. This is last year's Alfa Rome Sauber Alfa Romeo. Cannot forget Sauber, of course. It is. Wow. That's cool. I haven't seen one of these turbo hybrid F1 cars in person it's yet. I've only seen like the V8 era ones. This is quite cool. Look at the barge board work right here. So intricate. And we also got these split intakes up here. I don't know why they did that and I don't know if it helped or not. They don't have a name on it, but you know, this is the car driven by Marcus Ericsson and Charles Leclerc. Charles Leclerc down the inside. We're here with the A-Class. So in my honest opinion, I feel like this is really poorly made but I love how much space this has. So compared to the two series, I think this definitely has more space on the inside, but I feel like the two series just feels more like immersive and it feels like a better driver car. Nah. Now, Brian in the car here will probably have a very different opinion than me. No, this one is a lot nicer in the interior. Like, and not only that, like, honestly, I wish they had the wagon in the US, but they don't. Yeah, I love like, the wagon. Cause both this car and the two series are kind of ugly, but you know, yeah, there's an A45, I'll take that. Just get a Julia Quattrofolio. Get a hatchback. Gorgeous. <laughs> or okay. just get, just save up a little longer, get the AMG GT. Or just get a Maybach, you know? And a driver. Oh, f dude. <laughs> okay. Okay, guys, here with the Lego Bugatti Chiron. Surprisingly, it sounds like the actual Bugatti, just a little muffled as it should be, but um, it moves. It goes 20 miles per hour, guys. That's pretty impressive. It's uh, made out of over a million Legos. Just look at this thing. I mean, what? <laughs> this is like a childhood dream right here to build like an actual like life-size car. Take a look at this thing. It's, it's pretty sick. Okay guys, make sure to go check out Malibu Autobahn. Their stuff's pretty cool. Go check out their website. They're having a Black Friday sale. So definitely look forward to that. Um, check out their social media here. I think Matt will probably link it in the description guys, but go check it out. Can we go Definitely. see the Lego Chiron over there? Yeah, let's do that.